Hey folks, my name's Kevin and it's time for a little bit more knife nerdery and I'm so tremendously excited to get to share with you today these two totally titanium TRM knives. That was too many T's, but look at these things. Ooh, yeah, they are gorgeous. So these are the Ooh, much anticipated full titanium handle versions of the Three Rivers Manufacturing Atom and Neutron. So we're going to talk today about just like what makes these things so great, why you might want some, um, why they look so different from each other, what happened over here, and why this is not the Atomic. Yeah, that's, yeah. If you've watched Nick Shabazz's channel over the last year and a half, you'll have seen many times him show off a full tie version of the Atom that he called the Atomic. And what we have here and what, what you can get today is not that. And I want to talk about what's actually different and why I think this is a much better outcome for all of us. So first things first, I want to thank my friends for sending these along. This one was sent to me by my friend Joe. He's the guy that sent me that quiet carry cue back in the day. It's the very first time anyone ever loaned me a knife for the channel. So huge thank you to him. I knew he was going to send it to me in like new condition, but I didn't realize he was going to send it to me in literally new condition. He didn't even open the box. He just took the still sealed priority mailbox, put it in a bigger box with another knife and send it my way, which is just absolutely insane. I love you, Joe. Um, this was sent to be my, by Corey. Corey is an awesome dude. He's on Instagram as Stafford's EDC, and he used to be on YouTube as Casual EDC, but that channel got fully co-opted and is now Stafford's EDC as well. Amazing guy, and he's also one of the group experts in the Three Rivers Manufacturing Facebook group. So if you ever have any questions about these things, um, go hit him up on there and he'll be happy to answer questions. Super, super friendly guy. Okay. So if you're familiar with TRM, you're probably familiar with the concept of hot swappable scales. What that means is that on a normal knife, if you wanted to change these scales, if, if like the manufacturer or if an aftermarket provider made an alternative scale for your knife and you wanted to swap them out, you'd have to disassemble the entire knife. That's just basically par for the course. They all work that way. And that sucks because you mess up your centering. You have to refigure it all back out. You have to redo your lube. You just have, it's just so much more work, all the different pieces. On TRM knives, you just have to take out these two screws. And what's underneath there is a full titanium liner that still holds the rest of the knife together. And so everything stays intact and you just pop those out, take that off, pop in a new one. And it's so cool in part because that's just so much easier, but in part, it means that you can get a wide variety of materials and you can have an entire scale collection. You can make the knife feel totally new. This is one of the things people really, really love about them. And as much as we love all of the incredibly cool materials that we have right now, everyone has always wanted titanium scales. Part of that is just, we love titanium scales. Everyone loves titanium knives. They're just fantastic. They feel great. They look great, everything like that. But part of it is also that TRM knives have always been this kind of almost featherweight kind of, of, of just everything about them. They, they are, they're by to many people standards, the perfect EDC knife because they are so incredibly thin and light. And, and most people have an, uh, the type of EDC activities in their life that only require this type of very thin, slightly flexible, um, almost featherweight knife. I personally consider this that aspect of this, everything about that, a huge positive for my personal life. But some people have want you know just a sturdier knife. Some people want a little bit more heft in the hand, just it feels good. Some people want something that doesn't quite feel as light. And that's part of what makes these Thai versions so cool. And because they have just Ooh, we'll talk about that later, but man, they feel great in the hand. The thing is, they always wanted to do this. They always wanted to make titanium scales for, for these knives. And they ran into all sorts of hiccups as they tried to move it from their, their prototype shop into production. That's the thing, is that you can make one, you can make 10, but can you make 100? Can you make 1,000? And they, they, they kept on having all sorts of new kind of small nightmares as they tried to, uh, to, to transition these to scale up to actually make them for real. So the original plan was to make titanium scales that were hot swappable. Um, now, 
Let's talk a little bit about why that failed. So if you look at these not these scales that are over here that I pulled up, they are all this kind of um, contoured pattern that has this wing on it. And this is what on the Atom was the original form of contoured scales. And these are called the wing scales. You'll also see them called uh, 3D contoured scales back in the day, but these days they'll always have wing on uh, along with that in order to distinguish them from the more modern type of contouring pattern that we see on this. Um, what that comes from is like originally both the atom and the neutron are available in flat slab scales. And that's, you know, I, some people just like flat slab scales. They're also a lot cheaper to produce. And so um, these are still very, very popular. They're never my favorite. I always like the more rounding of the contour. I don't personally love the texture in these, although some people really love the grippiness. And I don't personally love how sharp some of these corners can be, especially on some of the mat harder materials like G10. But okay. So when they originally made the neutron, the original, original neutron, not the Neutron V2, that, that one had um, that didn't have nested liners yet. It had just a slab of material on the outside, and you could see the liner the entire way. And that meant that that outside material was too thin. Yeah, so the original Neutron scales were 61 thousandths thick, 60 thou. And what that meant is that the material was too thin for them to do any kind of meaningful contouring around the sides. There just wasn't enough material anywhere. Now, when they when they introduced the atom, the atom came second, and they they, they basically come up, came up with a bunch of kind of quality of life improvements over the original neutron. And one of those was this whole nested liner thing. The liners are milled out on the inside and allow. Sorry, the scales are milled out on the inside and allow the liner to sit nested inside here. And what that means is that it gives them a thicker piece of material to start with in the first place. These are 140 thou. And that additional thickness here meant that they could do neat, fun patterning. There's just more material to work with. There's different kind of materials that are available in that size. And so something like um, this, for example, this is real walnut. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that TRM has sold uh, real wood scales. Uh, they mostly sell tech wood. I'm going to do an entire video about what tech wood actually is. But something like this is just nowhere near strong enough to be contoured when you have that incredibly thin material. So they're a, the, moving up to thicker things, let them use stuff like wood or even micarta or especially G carta that's even a little bit more fragile. Um, but it, the, the thing is, is this contouring pattern they had leaves some spots still very quite thin. If you look at the way that this contours in this direction, it still gets very thin on the edges. And you can see that it kind of curves down here. And so my understanding of what was going wrong originally is they were trying to use this contour pattern and make it out of titanium. And I, while I, I believe that they encountered a whole bunch of different problems, the one that I've heard referenced the most often is that the material was just, the, the slabs of tie were just too thin to stay flat. They would warp in subtle places. And it just wasn't um, they weren't able to get them to actually stay sturdy and good. And so when they um, when they kept having problems with that, they eventually said, well, screw it. Let's see if we can do a different version altogether. And they gave up on the idea of these hot swappable scales, which is was kind of like a big, it was a big deal. Like this is one of their main beloved selling points. So to give up on that is, it was a big deal. But they decided to try a version that had that only on one side. So that, that is the atom that Nick had. So Nick Shabazz has one of only two a atomics in, in that has ever been sold. There's a whole bunch of, of versions that, that never really saw the light of day that came out of the prototype shop, but that Nick Shabazz and one other person are the only people that were ever able to buy an atomic. The other person uh, actually didn't so much buy it, they won it. There was a um, Doug Ritter's knife rights group uh, that he works to overturn nonsense knife law jurisdiction laws uh, across the country. Fantastic cause. And uh, TRM donated a atomic as a one of the prizes for for uh, uh, that kind of fundraiser. And even though they were having all these problems, they they felt it was in, important enough to follow through on that promise that they did go through and make by a, a, a in the prototype shop one other atomic and give it to that guy. And it did it did get resold, but whatever. Of course, how can you blame them? Um, that knife, the atomic, 
doesn't have the scale on one side. This entire, I'm sorry, it doesn't have a, a, a liner and scale on one side. The entire side is one milled piece of titanium, which allowed them to use a much thicker piece. And it also meant that they had a fully integrated backspacer. Now you'll hear that described as a monoblock on some knives. And basically what it means is that one of the sides is much, much thicker than the other. And the backspacer is actually a uh, part of the show side hole handle piece. Um, their, the version that they had didn't even have these screws because there was um, screws instead that are attaching it through that backspacer on the inside. And it's not like you had three screws on that side either. This side was still, I believe, still a, um, a, a scale that you could remove. And so the three screws, this side basically I think looked the same as this, and the three screws came in here where these barrel spacers are instead into a full backspacer. Now, that version, they were able again to get some to work, but because this side was still having that same issue, that same thing where this is a scale over a liner, they're still having that same kind of warping problems and other general machining problems as they tried to scale this up from their prototype shop to their, their giant um, full production uh, mills. And so they, they, honestly completely gave up like after months and months and months almost two full years of trying to make it work and constantly running into new problems they basically threw in the towel until something happened what happened was this so when the neutron 2 came out they backported some of the quality of life things from the, the atom to it and then one of those is the nested liners. So these versions here are 120 thou thick. That's how thick the material starts when they, they work it. And that's twice as thick as the original neutron ones. And so what that meant is the same kind of thing, that they were able to use new materials, but it also meant that they were able to do contouring for the first time. But rather than porting this wing pattern contouring down to the neutron, they started from scratch. And what's the, the big difference between these is how full this is. This just doesn't get as dramatically thin on the edges. And it also stays fully thick up here at the edge. You can see that there is a very subtle taper from this dimension to this dimension and from this dimension to this dimension, but this stays much, much thicker along the scale than these ever did. And so this proved actually very, very popular. People love the feel of these. I personally love the feel of these. I think they feel fantastic in hand. And so at some point they had the idea, you know, rather than just continuously making these, these versions, you know, partly because some people don't love the wings, some people, whatever, they decided to scale this back up and re-backport it up to the atom. And so the new versions of the contoured scales to the atoms, they still make these, but they're less common. Um, the new versions are, yeah, they're shaped slightly different because the atom is shaped slightly different from the neutron, but they're basically this same contouring pattern. And that's the thing that solved all of the problems as far as I understand it. This new contouring pattern and the, the subtle amount of thickerness everywhere meant that the scales that they were making from this were just more stable than they were before. And so when they tried milling some of these out of titanium, for the first time ever, it worked. <laughs> like they were able to make a a batch of uh, in their production shop um not just the prototype shop out of titanium using this same general pattern and they they were interchangeable they everything lined up correctly the same hardware worked um they weren't warping and everything they're like oh my god we can finally do this and so that is what finally we have here today this is an atom with titanium interchangeable scales. And yeah, the idea of the full tie version with the backspacer, that is still really freaking cool. I I would I would still love that knife, but this is so much better because you don't have to have a totally new knife. You can make your atom today turn into a, a, a tie atom the same way you can make it turn into a wood one or a micarta or anything like that. And that's just so much more versatile and so much easier. And it's a lower cost to entry because you can buy these standalone and they're, they're not cheap, but you can buy the scales by themselves. Um, and so what we have is something that is just much more accessible to people. 
Now, when they had success with that, they then said, well, if it worked there, can we backboard it down and scale it back down to the neutron? And sure enough, they were able to make neutron scales, neutron two scales specifically, in titanium as well. Now, I said I was to talk about what is different about these. This version has been sandblasted. It originally looked exactly like this. It's very shiny, it's beautiful, um, but Corey wanted something with a more matte finish, and so he sent this to EDC Gear house slash way of knife in Traverse City. Now that is a, a company that is one of the only retailers, brick and mortar retailers of TRM knives, but they only are permitted to sell in, in store. So you can't order online or through the phone. Um, but they are also a you know, a knife customization like mega house. And so one of the things they offer is all sorts of kind of mods, including this um, bead blast finish. Now this in particular is a glass bead blast finish. And so I don't normally love blasted finishes, but because I, what I don't love are like sandblasted finishes. That feels too much like sandpaper to me. It feels too much like that kind of dry chalkboardy thing. This is freaking gorgeous. You still get to see all of this wonderful pinstriping, and you still get to see all of the contour lines along the side, but it feels velvety smooth and has this really, really delightful finish. And this, of course, also had anodized hardware that um, Corey moved over there. Um, and you know, the thing is, is like, I don't know which way I'd go. Like, I love this, and I think it is absolutely stunning, but I actually really, really like the way this turned out. I I'm going to go as far as to say I absolutely love the way this turned out. So if I were to get my hands on one of these, would I do something like that? Maybe. Um, okay, so <laughs> uh, I wanted to talk about what's actually different from these, though, because even though they, they used the same general contouring pattern, they did make some subtle changes, and that mostly comes around how these, these clips attach. The clip attachment is different for both of these than it is on the normal one, and the clip itself is different here. I unfortunately don't have my Atom with me at the moment, or my Shadow. They're both on loan to another channel. Shout out to Marco, aka Knives of the Roundtable. But what we have here is a clip that has been basically taken from the shadow. The old Adam clip, the, the still current Adam clip, although really, please, Marianne, switch over permanently, this is so much better. That clip has two holes on top and a slot on the bottom. And it's it's definitely one of the hardest parts about taking the, the thing on and off is trying to get your little screwdriver in here and line everything up through those little holes. This inverted version with the slot on top and the holes at the bottom is just so much easier to use. And this kind of oval, like kind of wider on one side shape is just really, really pretty. This is, I believe for all intents and purposes, the clip that you have on the shadow and that's where they first introduced this and they brought it over here. Now I'm gonna take it off for a moment to show you another thing that is different. Because on the regular contoured Atom scales. I don't have one of this style of contouring, but it's going to have the exact same thing as you have over here on these 3D wings. And what that basically is, is a slot. And it runs off the entire back of the knife. And if you compare that over here, what we have is a full pocket. Yeah. So what's cool about this is it allows... So by, by the way, this clip does totally work on these other versions. It fits perfectly fine, but it is slightly shorter, which is why they're able to get away with having this back here. Now I'm going to put this back in for just a moment so I can talk about why this is so nice. What's nice is that because it's able to sit in that little pocket, you don't have that little notch cut out anymore. And it's not like a big deal, but it's always been a little bit ugly having that stick out the back. You know, it's just, it's just, it's nowhere near as clean as this. Now what's over here is actually slightly a bigger deal. Um, what they've done on this, I'm going to take this off, is added a little landing pad. So it's going to be kind of subtle and hard to see, maybe here, but I'll take... Do I have any of these that don't have anything on them already? Sure. Oh my god, aren't those gorgeous? If you look over here, the standard versions are just milled the entire way. There is no um, kind of difference in the topology of this section, and as a result, it's contoured. The surface is contoured. So if you were to try and take this same clip and put it over here, it, under normal circumstances, wouldn't sit perfectly flat. You would have a slight 
um, wobble that you would have to do. And so one of the things that way that people will sometimes compensate, I, I personally, the way I compensate for that is I screw this side all the way down and then I, and so it's kind of slightly warped up and then I screw this side down and it slightly bends the scale just a little bit. If you go too hard or if you put this side in first, you can sometimes get the, the screw to stick out just a little bit. It's not ever going to be in the path of the blade, but what some people do is they'll use different size screws. That's what Corey is doing here. You can see that he has a shorter screw on one side than the other and it's because he was using this originally on some um, scales just like this, I believe. But over here on the uh, a titanium version, it's kind of maybe going to be hard to see, but do you see how there is a raised platform? This is a completely flat surface, and so these things will now finally sit perfectly flat. And this is something that I hope they do going forward on all of these 3D contoured knives. It's going to take more time. It's a more premium type of milling surface to be able to have to move them down like this, but I personally think that this is is obviously better. Like, it's just obviously better. It's a small better, but it's, it's an obviously better. And so, yeah, these are built on the same milling pattern, but it's they have slight quality of life improvements on both of those. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is um, just generally speaking, the how these feel now and part of what we're going to have to talk about is how this milling works this is the um these are pinstriped in a way let's see how good this will look if i zoom in i'll pop in some pictures because i'm the type of person that likes to look at this milling pattern up close under a magnifying glass i find it absolutely mesmerizing now what we have here is really nice milling this is excellent pinstripe milling let me zoom out just a little bit more so this is not going to be that kind of like absolutely smooth milling you find in something like a $900 hold haptic. You do see the um, stepping lines as you go, uh, but they're so clean, precise, and uniform. When you look at like the spacing of them, how in line they are, how much the edge along these ridges, how clean it is, man... This is really, really, really nice milling. And I'm not going to, I'm trying to like talk shit about anyone else, but if you compare this to, for example, a, a, I don't know, like I had that um, Protec Malibu, that Thai Malibu, and you look at the milling on that, this is just so much cleaner. This is really, really nice milling. And it gives you just this really beautiful effect. Even when you come down here and have it all sandblasted, you still can see those stripes. You definitely can still feel them and you can hear them. And so you still get this really nice texture. It just feels so good as you move side to side, and it feels really nice as you slide this way. Now, this milling pattern I said came over from the contoured scales down here. And I'm showing you this version because this the harder this is, the more you can see that these stripe pinstripe lines are on these as well. When you look at something like this, this material is so soft, micarta has all this fuzziness to it that you can't even tell, but there are the pinstripe lines here. When you look at a harder material like this, you can actually see them. Do you see that right there? See as we go? You see those lines on the back? So that pinstriping is everywhere, and that pinstriping is actually functional. Uh, it's, it's subtle, but it makes the most difference on a hard surface like this titanium. What, where I'm what I'm talking about is how that pinstriping causes these ridges on this side as you go. These pinstripes themselves are what form the contour in this dimension. And so rather than, than um, doing like some kind of cutting in this way, it's these lines that come down, and as a result, you get these striping on the back. And on, for, on, for one, this just looks cool. You get it on the bottom too, and it just, it just looks neat. But it actually does have a functional use. I don't know how much this is a side effect or something they planned, but this they are very, you know, like they're incredibly thoughtful people, so this is probably intentional. Um, if you look at how this comes down here, it kind of acts as very mild jimping. It's nowhere near as aggressive as jimping, but if you look up here where it's more spaced out, and I try and rub this on my hand, this, I feel it, but it's not like gripping. And I come down here, it's not like it's gripping the same way jimping is, but this is providing significantly more traction. And you get the same effect right here, where this stepping comes in right there, and back here. And so you get is, there are spots on this knife right 
there too, where you get subtly more traction, and those correspond to where you put your fingers for grip. Like it's right here where you have your finger that this is giving you that extra texture, and it's right here at the back where it rests into your palm in a pinch grip where you have that extra texture. And so it's that kind of thing where like this version of the, the scales with that, that subtle extra texturing feels incredibly locked in in your hand. <clears throat> But it also just looks gorgeous. That's one of the big things about this knife is that these Thai versions just look so uh, just high end. They look so like just like classy and fancy and beautiful, especially when you leave them in like the obvious shiny pinstripe. When you come over here and you do something like this and you sandblast them, um, it still gives the knife this really robust high-end feel. The feeling of these in hand is one of the big things that really, really kind of drives home that you're holding something different. And it feels just really, really premium. Part of that is the weight. Now that featherweight quality of these is such a positive thing, it, it, but it's so light, they can leave you feeling a little bit hollow at all uh, at times. And with these, these are still light enough that they feel light as far as knives go, but they have that extra kind of rigidity and like kind of robust quality in them that just makes them feel more expensive, feel more premium. And um, I want to talk about the weight now for, as a result of that. So if you have a normal, um, it's, the weight is always going to vary depending on what kind of scales you have. But if you have a normal one and say something like uh, my Carter or something like that, it's going to be, I don't know, 2.8, 2.9 ounces, something like that. And this is just over an ounce more. This is just over four ounces. And if you go back and watch, I've mentioned that Protec Malibu, if you watch that video, I said that that knife, which I think was maybe like four and a quarter ounces, I said that that one felt too heavy. And I, I made a point of saying that it did wasn't that it was a heavy knife, is that it felt too heavy for my expectations given the size and the distribution of the weight in the knife. It was so thin in that kind of dimension this way that it felt weird in my hand. It felt like I could feel it sliding around, uh, move, like I could feel the momentum shifting in my hand. And the distribution on this, even though the weight's about the same, just feels so much better. That extra height here means that that weight sits across your hand in a much more evenly distributed way. And so this even though it's about the same weight, doesn't feel heavy. Neither of them are heavy, four versus four and a quarter or so ounces. They're not heavy, but they feel, this one just feels so much nicer and distributed in my hand. Let's talk about how these things compare as we go to different, different materials. And so to give you a sense of what you might expect, not that many people have the, the solid wood versions over here, and I unfortunately don't have any tech wood in these same kind of comparable ones. But the thing is, is what doesn't really matter so much is the actual numbers I'm going to give you, it's, it's how they relate to each other. Over here on this end, where we have solid wood, none of the resin in it you'll find in tech wood, um, we have the absolute lightest. These things weigh only an eighth of an ounce, 0.125 basically. Um, my Carter weighs literally twice that, so it's a quarter of an ounce. And this is still incredibly light. If you own any of the micarta scales for these or you have knives with micarta scales, you know that that makes the knife lighter. And I don't have any carbon fiber, but carbon fiber would be sitting right in between these two. If we come up here to G10, um, this is ever so slightly heavier. These are like basically a third of an ounce. This is basically a quarter of an ounce. That's basically an eighth of an ounce. And so what's important is just like how these things kind of scale. The, the This is slightly more than this. And this, if you take just one of these off, like because like I'm comparing the weights of just a single side, this is um, 0.818 ounces. So, you know, it's it's like roughly half an ounce more per side. And so as well, that's how you get to that roughly just over an ounce more on the overall knife compared to something like the Mercado that people are used to. I don't have all of these scale comparisons down here. Um, on the Neutron, but if you just compare, for example, a Micarta one, a lot of people are familiar with that, this weighs 2.3 ounces and this weighs 3.2, so just under an ounce more. But let's talk about that with regard to scale. This is a 3-inch knife, so this weighing 2.3 ounces on a 3-inch knife puts this so far under that ounce and inch mark that this can feel hollow to some people. And this 3-inch blade, 3.2 ounce knife is a little bit over that, but it's still very firmly in that like about an ounce and inch range that makes this feel nice. So yeah, 
In terms of the weight, these are still not heavy knives. They're just heavier in a way that makes them feel solid and robust. My only thing that's even approximating complaint, the only thing I would change about these is these corners right here. So this contouring pattern does have a subtle contour in this direction. It is higher in the middle than it is at the end, but what we have at the edge is basically these hard crisp corners. And it's not as big of a deal on something like this, this micarta. Um, it's a little bit softer, but it's still a hard angle. And you compare that to how incredibly beautifully smooth this is, it just feels a little bit worse. And it's the same thing here. I get that they can't fully chamfer it the way that they have here. I think that was part of the problem, but I would love to see a really, just a subtle chamfer along this edge to make it so that it's not crisp and hard. It's a little bit better here on this one that has been bead blasted, but it's still, it's the only hard angle. And you compare that to how incredibly great these transitions are, yeah, it stands out. And I could, I would love to see all sorts of other things. I would love to see, you know, cool patterns of uh, kinds, even just like out of slant. Like the, I think the, the full atomic that Nick has is at, a, at an angle and I think it looks nice. But those are all things that I think would make it uh, more fun, not better. This is the only thing that I can actually see that I think would make it better. Everything else is just really, really good. So my final thoughts on this is basically that it just feels really, really nice. I am someone that loves how thin and light these are, and I love materials, casual materials like uh, micarta. So I adore this version of the knife, but something like this, I'm also the type of person that loves clean, sleek, minimal, kind of dressed up knives. And it's so nice that there's finally an option available for folks to make their atom or neutron feel that kind of like ultra premium, like nice, rigid weight to it heft. It just feels so good. It takes the knife from feeling like a really, really well-made mid-range knife to a really, really well-made high-end knife. And if you compare this to other things in this kind of general space, it just is obviously a little bit nicer everywhere. And it, it like I, I, I'm one of the things I mentioned in that Malibu. I don't want to drag on the Malibu too much, but one of the things I mentioned in the Thai Malibu uh, thing is that that knife felt a little bit overpriced to me because, um, yeah, it had a little bit more going on. It had an anodization color to it and stuff like that. Um, but that knife was somewhere in the four hundred fifty to five hundred dollar range, and if you're buying it aftermarket, it's even more than that. And this, I believe, is I think three eighty. I think if you get the full version, I don't remember how much it all adds up. Um, I think it's about that much money. And so when you, yeah, that's still a tremendous amount of money. That's still a very expensive knife. But when you compare what you're getting for that and the quality of the work that, gone, that has gone into this, it's just, the value is obviously there. It is so good. Yeah, so I personally am so excited that these are gonna be an option. I'm so excited that this, this is working in production. Um, they're still hard to come by, and yeah, they're always gonna be expensive, but they're still hard to come by, but they're going to become more and more available. Um, this is working, and so they are doing full production, lots of these going forward, and so there's gonna be a bunch more coming this year. So if, you're, if you've been waiting forever to get these, now is your chance, it is, it is, absolutely been worth the wait. Would it be cool to have that full atomic with the integrated backspace and everything like that? Yes. Is this even better? I personally think so. Quick so, update, because Joe is absolutely incredible. Not only did he lend this in for me to check out for the channel, but he helped me pick up my very own set for the Neutron. He knew how badly I wanted these and how I was hunting everywhere for them, but I just couldn't find a pair to buy because there's so few available. So when he happened to see a set of the scales go up as a surprise micro drop on the website, he was just in the right place at the right time, he jumped on it, bought them immediately, and actually had them shipped directly to me. And that's just such an incredibly kind and generous thing to do. Thank you so much, Joe, for helping me acquire a pair for myself. And now we can finally see them in their unblasted matchy-matchy twinsies glory. And my god, they look so nice together. I loved the blasting that Corey had done on his. Honestly, it's great. But seeing these side by side and with their shininess, yeah, I know it was too much for him. He wanted it to be blasted. But they look so luxurious together when they're like this. 
I'm um, I'm the type of person because of my hand size, the Neutron is the perfect size knife for me. And so I find that I reach for my Neutron so much more than my Atom. And so the reality is right now, while these are still kind of hard to come by, I'm probably not going to hunt down a matching pair for my Atom. But like I said, these are something that they can do in full production now. And so someday these are gonna become much more readily available. And then at that point, yeah, absolutely absolutely I will get a matching set because not only does they look amazing together but it really does it just transforms the knife into something so incredibly sturdy and luxurious feeling my god these things are just amazing so in the meantime I will be pleased as punch to have a set for my neutron and yeah wow so nice. So thank you all for watching. Huge, huge thanks to Joe for not just loaning one to me, but also helping pick up my own. And huge thanks to Corey. Uh, I don't have his anymore. I had to send it back, of course. Um, and so I unfortunately can't show you all three side by side, but my God, is it cool getting to see these shiny matchy ones right together. Anyway, thanks to you all for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.